too long ago, the good people over at Aaron Signal made a video about the history of game criticism, in which they argue that the debate between narratology and ludology never happened. They based their argument on an article by Gonzalo Frasca titled Ludologists Love Stories 2 back in 2003. In the article, Gonzalo tries to argue that there was never any sort of discussion regarding whether games are about narrative or play. Aaron Signal expands on the article and says that indeed there was never any kind of debate about whether games should be stories or games. And to a very minor degree, they are somewhat correct. There was never any sort of formal debate in which on one side you had game designers arguing that games should be all about play and on the other side you had designers arguing that games should be about stories and there was a moderator who gave each side a certain predetermined amount of time to make their case. Of course not, that never happened. But the thing is that there was a debate, not so much about what games should be but about how games should be understood. And on one side of the debate there was group of people, the narratologists, who argued that in order for you to understand what games are trying to say, you should look at them as if they were stories. Whereas on the other side of the spectrum, you did have ludologists who argued that stories were nothing more than a pretext for play, and that for you to really understand what games are about, what you should look at is play itself. And again, it was not a debate in which one group of people stood and stood up and made an argument and on the other side of the stage another group of people made the counter argument. No, this is actually a conversation that took place over time with some very early arguments being made, first by Brenda Laurel on 1991 in her book Computers at Theater, where she argued that games are best understood as a form of participant drama, and later on 1997 when Janet Murray published her book Hamlet on the Holodeck, where she argued that games are best understood as narrative form. Offering an early counterpoint to this perspective is Espinar Seth's seminal book Cybertext, the 1998 manifesto in which he not only explains that games are indeed ludic systems, but that they are best understood as such. This back and forth went on for the following decade and could be argued that it is still going on. On 2001, Mary Laurie Ryan, in her book Narrative Across Media, argued, of course, that games can indeed be understood as stories. At around the same time, in the opening volume of Game Studies, that is, the International Journal of Computer Games Research, our system once again made the argument that games are best understood through play. Not only this, but he went even further, and he argued that narratologists, scholars of film, who try to look at games were attempting to do nothing more than colonize a new form of textuality. Ludologist Jesper Jewell, of course, agreed with Arseth's position, where in the same volume, in an article called Games Telling Stories, he argued that all the narrative elements that might exist in a game are nothing more than a fiction, again, a premise for play. Likewise, Marco Escaline called this the gaming situation. Jewel further supports this argument in his book Half Real, and has later given in speech and presentations strong commentaries against those who would look at games purely as narrative. In 2004, Espinar Seth again put out an article called Genre Trouble, in which he discusses the problem of genre within game studies, a problem that I think is still very much prevalent, as no one really seems to know what genre is about, and so Arseth seems to frame this genre discourse as an extension of the discussion about narrativity or ludocentric focus of game studies. Of course, these two are not the only perspectives that were presented. On 2006 and later in 2008, Ian Bogost produced two manuscripts, one called Unit Operations, the second one called Persuasive Games, in which he argued that games are, sure, best understood as systems, but as systems that were rhetorical in nature. Proposing a perspective that draws on elements of narrative, Henry Jenkins later wrote in his book Convergence Culture, a chapter in which he argued that games could be seen as part of an ecosystem of what he called transmedia narratives, that is, stories that exist across a variety 
of media. Even I once made an argument within this discourse when, on 2009, I published an article in the Journal of Computer Games called Eludamos, the chapter arguing that one could, in fact, read video games through literary lenses. And perhaps the latest entry into this still ongoing quote-unquote debate is Astrid Enslin's book Literary Gaming, in which she, with some level of success, tries to bring together these two schools of thought, and explains that although games, yes, focus on mechanics, also employ narrative, dramatic, and poetic techniques. Now, I should mention that these are not by any means the only instances in which somewhat argued for or against a certain approach to the analysis of games. Indeed, if you look at the collection of books from Noah Wardrip Fernie in first person, second person, and third person, you will see a conversation regarding these approaches. If you look at the small volume titled At Issues, you will see again a section that does tackle the question of whether games are narrative or play, and I'm fairly certain that if you look at all of the informal writing, that is, blogs and YouTube videos, you will find people who discuss games as either narrative or ludic, and who make the argument that games should be understood more as one or the other. So was there a debate about whether games should be stories or should be games? No, that never happened. But there was a very real debate, and there still is, as to whether games are best understood through ludic theoretical frameworks or through narratological frameworks. And so when people say the ludology versus narrativity debate, it is that conversation which they are alluding, not to some fictional debate about what games should be, but to a very real debate about how games are best understood. In my next video, I will address the other issue discussed by Aaron Signal, ludonarrative dissonance or ludonarrative disco biscuits or whatever you want to call it. I think that he makes some misguided points, but for that, I'll see you next week. Fingers crossed. So here's the end slate. If you like my video, make sure to like and subscribe, check out some of my other stuff. You can also check out some of my games or tutorials or leave a comment. Tell me what you think. I'll see you next time.